So we made it to the town of Jesus Maria. Jesus Maria is north of the city, about, I don't know, an hour bus ride. And there are a bunch of uh, ranches up here that were Jesuit owned. They, uh, they purchased the land here in like the 1600s, early 1600s. And they started a bunch of ranches where they did uh, agricultural work. And here's one of them right here. You can see it right here. Beautiful old church, very, very old. And uh, this one, specifically, in Jesus Maria, Estancia, which is like a ranch, Estancia de Jesus Maria, is also Museo Jesuitica, or Jesuitico Nacional. So it is a, uh, it's a museum. And we can go in and see um, all, the, all the old construction. And I imagine there's many, many rooms with like artifacts and stuff to see. So, uh, Let's go in. I'm looking around at the signs, and it doesn't say it doesn't say anything about uh, us not being able to film. So I think we should be able to. Uh, anyway, let's go in and check it out. Okay, so we made it in. Uh, free admission, but you can donate, and we will do that later. I just wanted to get a shot out here of uh, the grounds. There's this nice little pond over here. Very, very peaceful area. Very tranquil. Muy tranquilo. There's the church again that we saw from the front. And around here there's an entrance. This is where we went in. Actually, I already went in here. Talked to a nice lady in the information uh, area. She gave me all the information I needed to know in Spanish, so I got 50% of it, as always. Um, but basically, we can walk around the grounds, sort of a self-guided tour, and uh, stuff is written in Spanish and English, she said, which is nice. We'll go in the church last, I think. But we'll go over here into like this center area. Here's a plaque. Oh yeah, see? This is the 400th anniversary. 1618 to 2018. So 1618. That's when uh, the land was purchased here by the Jesuits. And uh, that's when this all this all started. Actually, let's start here on the lower level. Oh, first off, here's donations. Donate. like the bottom floor it's actually mostly offices but that's okay we can we can at least take a look at this this, this area I mean this this there is a museum but you know this itself is a historical artifact because this building like I said they bought the land in 1618 then they started constructing this and it took hundreds of years of course to be constructed and uh, it actually wasn't even completely finished by 1767 when the Jesuits were expelled from uh, all the Spanish colonies. I think I read they were still building part of the, uh, the church itself, the temple, um, in, in 1767, so. I'm gonna stand, ooh, there's a nice breeze right here. It's very hot today, as it is always on all of our videos here in Cordoba. Um, and this area, Jesus Barria, like when we uh, got off at the bus station, it's like a pretty small town, but it's like, there are other little like towns around it. Let's see what else is here. Okay, so 
Looks like there is a little store, a little like gift shop. And the exhibitions and things are upstairs. So let's go up and take a look. Man, this is really cool. You can see like up in the ceiling, all the old, uh, it's like really old wood rafters. I think up here, let's see, this section I think is like all archaeology stuff. disc, ceramic vase, these are all really, really old. La misma tierra. So I think a lot of the stuff that's in here, this must be, well, I don't know, it must be, but I'm guessing that this is stuff from like before the Spanish, before the Jesuits. This looks like like stuff from the native people before. Wow, it's really amazing, really intricate. Look at that. A fragment, fragment of a vase. for uh, all your tobacco needs. Looks like another pipe. I guess they were into tobacco. I mean, this, you know, the Americas, known for their tobacco, that's for sure. This is some really cool stuff. So this isn't, you know, necessarily Jesuit history, but all of this archaeology is really cool because it's I think it's all from around this area. I mean I would imagine it's from this this site. And the Jesuits they had uh well a complicated history <laughs> with the native people of uh of the region here and also up north in their, uh, their settlements up in like Misiones province, Corrientes. Very complicated. You know, they came here to, uh, you know, as missionaries. But uh, on ranches like this, they also used a lot of indigenous forced labor to do their ranching. And uh, Later on, they were known to, uh, to sell the products that they made here from the ranches, mainly wine, because they were growing grapes, uh, and used that, uh, the profits from those sales to uh, purchase African slaves for forced labor. So, a complicated history, for sure. So that's like a rope made from the fur of a llama. Some really, really amazing pieces here. This one, you know, obviously was in several, several pieces and then they reconstructed it. You can see all the, the breaks. Someone found all those pieces and put it together. Different like 
Looks like bronze tools. Man, this, I, I, I will say these rooms, you know, here that they're using for the museum, of course, this, you know, <laughs> wasn't a museum, but not at least until like the 1940s. Because after, after the Jesuits were expelled, the property changed hands several times. And uh, ultimately in 1941, the, uh, the government here in Argentina decided to make this a national historical site. And I believe in 46, like five years later, they opened up the museum. So there's the ranch itself, which we're gonna get a chance to take a look around. But then there's also this museum here. It makes this one kind of special. Like I said, there are other ranches around this area. There's one like to the south, pretty close. And a few more in like other towns around this area. But those don't have a museum like this one. That's why I wanted to come here. Now this, this wooden cabinet here, this looks very Spanish colonial. And I think this stuff here is all like Spanish colonial artifacts. So it's all made out of uh, silver. Maybe not silver, maybe silver, I don't know. This looks like maybe a wash basin. Yeah, cooking, big, big uh, iron cooking pots, cast iron. So this then I guess was like how the, uh, how the uh, Jesuits lived when they were here in the uh, 1600s and 1700s. Because they were here, you know, 1618, they purchased it and then they were expelled in 1767. So that's like a whole, you know, 150 years, roughly. This looks like people who donated, maybe, and then they got, they got their names put up on here. There's more exhibition space over here, but there is one more room over here. I'm gonna check out a uh, cocina, so it's a kitchen. That kind of looked like a kitchen that we were in. Maybe that was like more like a dining area. Oh yeah, this looks very kitcheny. There's a fire over there where they would burn. This is like, yeah, very, very colonial era. Big cast iron pot hanging there. They'd build a fire right underneath it. Cook over the fire. You can see some of the cooking vessels too, you know, things that they would boil. boil stuff in, like a, like almost like a pitcher, probably for like boiling water for tea, coffee, mate, probably mate, honestly. <laughs> a lot of cooking vessels over there on that shelf. Man, there's a little rope line here so we can't cross over in there to take a look, but you can see it from here. It looks pretty, pretty cool. Old mortar and pestle, mortars and a pestle pestling things. Really cool. Chimney that goes out, of course. And it looks like, oh yeah, okay, so there's like a little pass-through. Right, right there. So that they could make the food in here and then pass it through over to the dining area, it looks like. This is very cool. You know, we've been talking about the Jesuits so much. I've been learning about Jesuit history and how important it is to uh, the history of Cordoba here. It's really cool to come see like the actual, you know what I mean? Actually like put your hand on something, on the actual, actual place. Because it's one thing to see, 
you know, like to see the Jesuit block like we saw in the city from the outside or to see like a cathedral that you know was was built, you know, from a long time ago. But this this is real a real connection to the the Jesuit history here, which, you know, like I said, is so prominent and such an important part of the history of of the city and of the the province too, just this whole area. Look at that, motion lights. That's good, actually. Saves, saves electricity. Good for them. So this looks like, yeah, sacred art. And now this, I'm guessing these are all porcelain. And I'm not sure from how, like how how old these are because like I said you know the Jesuits were here for quite some time 150 years roughly so this could have been I don't know enough about art honestly to know to like be able to look at something like this and say oh I know exactly when that's from but I mean they're quite they're all quite old gigantic old chest here now this I imagine, let's see, this is like a very large, uh, large Jesus. Or actually, well, I wonder if this is showing the, like the actual robes that the Jesuits would have worn when they were here. Because you know, this is a, it's a, it's a ranch, but it's also like a monastery. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe if anybody knows what we're actually looking at here, they can put it down in the comments. I'm sure there are people out there with much, much better information than me. And uh, I, I may have misunderstood the woman at the front who said, she said that stuff was gonna be in English also, but it doesn't look like it is. And uh, unfortunately our Spanish is never fully sufficient, <laughs> never fully sufficient to understand what it is we're looking at. I mean, this I'm pretty sure I know what we're looking at. This is a nativity scene with the baby Jesus. But what are we actually looking at? You know, the actual sculptures. When were they made? Where were they made? Who made them? Looks like this one actually was in Spain. I wonder also if perhaps these things in here were not, you know, made by the Jesuits. Maybe they're just in here because, because the Jesuits were, a, you know, a Catholic religious order and they needed, wanted to fill out the museum with some, like, you know, religious art, which would make sense. Madrid, 1761. That's like right, right before, right before the, uh, right before they were expelled from the from the New World over here. Well, in pretty much everywhere. Oh, we lost the light. I guess that means it's time to leave. Time to leave this room. We'll move on to the next one. I guess I wasn't moving fast enough to keep the motion sensors tricked. Oh, it looks like so. This was for washing hands, like a sink out here. And I wonder, it looks like inside there's another like another hole there. So I wonder if this was, a, if there was a, you know, like an aqueduct system where they were running water. I mean, when we, when we saw the Jesuit block, we did see that like excavated area where there was a cistern and a whole water system underground. And I wonder if they had that here as well. I would imagine they did. They had very, you know, pretty ingenious um, engineering for the time. This looks like a sundial. 
I mean, of course, it's on its side. This would be laid out horizontally. That's pretty cool, so you can tell time. And of course, they probably did have, you know, a water system here for irrigation for, uh, for the crops, because like I said, they were growing all kinds of crops here, mainly grapes for wine that they would sell, but then also they would have, oh wow, look at this, crazy, look at that crazy dog snake down there. It's interesting, it almost looks like it's combining um, different styles. These little uh, little relics, these little charms down here. <clears throat> Small crucifixes. Oh, here we go. Imperial crown. Oh boy. And these are all. I would imagine silver. This has got to be silver, right? Yeah. Plata fundida. So silver. That was the big thing. The big thing here. Some more paintings over here, it looks like. And etchings. Very interesting, very cool. Wow, it's, it, I mean, really amazing work too, you know? Like, it's very small. It's, it's maybe hard to see, but I'll put my hand in there so you can like get a size comparison. Like, it's really, really small. And the amount of detail on it is pretty amazing on a lot of these pieces. Yeah, these are from these are from quite some time ago. That's like 18th century stuff. So 1700s, 1700s. Oh, here we go. Some more royal royal bling over here. All silver with giant gemstones in it. Look at the size of that stone. What do you think that is? Blue. Sapphire, maybe? I don't know. This is all royal silver, though. This is basically this stuff that uh, was hanging around in Buenos Aires when they got raided by the English. Yeah, because this is like the 19th century, right? So that's the 1800s, so this is like when our guy Sobermonte, <laughs> when he grabbed all the silver and ran off to Cordoba, that's what he was taking with him. Really, really amazing, amazing stuff here. So there's more rooms we can look through. I think we're gonna go down, we'll go down to the end of the hall here, because there's other people here, you know? I don't wanna bother other people when I'm like walking around talking to myself like an idiot. Well, actually, I'm really, I'm talking to you. We're all idiots together in this. But maybe we can go down to this room at the end. If there's nobody in here. And then we can circle back. Oh, I think we found the bathroom. Yeah. We found the bathroom, guys. There it is. Right there. That's what it originally looked like. Public. Public toilets. And here you go. See, one of these is lit up. You can like look down into it. So that's how they did it. <laughs> it would all go down into there. Look, anytime you think to yourself like, man, I wish I had a time machine. 
could go back in time and see what it was like in the 1600s in this beautiful pastoral scene with Jesuit monks out there farming and doing their stuff. Just imagine. Just remember, that's where you had to poop. And if you couldn't make it to there in the middle of the night, pull that thing out from under your bed. Poop in that. Also, no guarantee if you traveled back in time that you'd be the person pulling this out from under their bed and pooping in it. You might be the person who is in charge of getting rid of the poop in the morning. And that person, I'm pretty sure, was not being paid. In fact, someone probably paid for that person and then owned them. So, the next time you want to have a time machine and travel back in time, just remember, not everybody was living the good life. This is pretty cool though, these, these bottles, like I said, they were making wine here, lots of wine. And uh, some of the wine they would use for themselves, they'd drink it here. But other wine, they would sell, they'd sell on the market. You know, a lot of the stuff that they were doing here was self-sustaining, they were growing other crops too. Legumes and, and uh, fruits, had orchards and things like that. So, largely self-sustaining, but at the same time, there's some stuff that you just can't produce yourself here and for that stuff you'd have to uh, you'd have to find something that you could sell one of those things they were selling was uh, wine but another thing like we talked about in the our video about Sherba Mate not here of course because it doesn't grow down here but in the uh, up in like Misiones province up further north that's what they were growing they were growing mate and they would sell that stuff. Because mate, Spanish conquistadors were selling their horses to get their hands on that stuff. So it was super popular. Oh wow, look at this. Religious, religious garb. Really intricate too, I mean look at this. Hand, hand sewn, of course, you know, there's, although, you know, they were, I know they were using looms to make certain things, so it's possible they were using, like, looms to make the fabric and then hand sewing pieces together. Like, this, this kind of looks like it was made on a loom. If you look really close, you can see the stitching. I don't know if you can see it. It's a bit of a glare. It's really cool though, it's very intricate, whatever, however it was made. Ornamentos sagrados, sacred ornaments. Yeah, so I imagine this is, you know, they would wear these when they're doing mass. This stuff in the middle, like this was definitely woven on a loom. And I know that they were doing that here. I wonder, I wonder if they were weaving on the loom and then maybe selling some of the stuff that they were weaving as well, because there would have been surely a demand for that kind of stuff. And of course, more silver here. This one in the middle just looks like gold, actually. Not a lot of gold um, in this area. This was an area for silver. There was gold in other parts of South America for sure, in Latin America, but not around here as much. Let's see if we can pop over into the next room. Like I said, there's another group of people here who, uh, I don't, I don't want to bother them. It's nice to have, have the whole room to ourselves too, you know, if we can't. So, let's see, who's this?
padre general Claudio Acquaviva. Padre general Muzio Vitelleschi. Vitelleschi. I mean, that's Italian, of course. It would be pronounced differently in Spanish than it would be in Italian. Francisco de Borja. Wait, Borgia? Is this? Hmm. Francisco de Borgia. I recognize that name. San Ignacio el Doctor. Padre General Ignacio Visconti. So Ricci Okay, so here this is the monogram of the company of Jesus. This is like the, the Jesuits, this is their monogram. This is, there's no, uh, there's no card for this one, but this one is definitely someone dying. There's an angel pointing him up to heaven. There's what looks like some native people who look quite sad that he's dying. Interesting, interesting painting. I think this is the, uh, might be the last, the last room. These are some really, really intricate, I mean like, you know, this is like pen, this is like ink, right? So they're drawing these with ink. I mean, it's like really intricate, because it's so small. It's basically just like a page, you know, the size of a book. There's my hand for size comparison. It's very, very small, but I mean, really, really amazing, intricate. Um, pen like ink work. There's the last the bathroom where we were. I think this here completely dark room. Whoa, okay, this is the last room. Oh, it's money. All right. So these are from Argentina. Oh, this is old money. Republica Argentina from 1873, from 1890. Ooh. I'm not like a coin collector or a money collector or anything, but old money is kind of cool when you, when you see it. All these old coins.
Banco Nación Argentina, 20 centavos, 20, 20 centavos. Man, that's crazy. One peso. One peso, Buenos Aires, from 1897. In comparison, there's a current 1,000 peso. Times have changed. Times have changed in Argentina, that's for sure. Looks like from Uruguay, Peru. And these would these would all be, I mean, the, the you know, obviously the paper money is paper, but these would be silver. All these things, see, monedas de plata, plata is silver. Banco Central de Chile, 10 pesos. Brazil, old Brazilian money, that's pretty cool. What else? Paraguay, Bolivia. even have some Estados Unidos one dime there's a dime from the United States oh, Buffalo nickel old pennies these we recognize Mexican Haiti Colombia Venezuela Ecuador not too many from each of those England oh, they have a lot from England I'm not going to go individually through each one of these because, man, I mean, we'd be here forever. They got a lot of money in this room. Let's take a quick look. Just, we'll just say which they have. Some Imperial Romano, so like Roman Imperial coins, I guess. Wow. Vatican, Italy, Spain. France, Portugal, Israel, Austria, Germany, Romania, down there. Belgica, what's Belgica? Huh, Belgica. Belgium, maybe? Yeah, it's gotta be Belgium, right? Russia, Hungary, Luxembourg. This one. I don't know what this is. Hmm. Suecia, Switzerland, Canada, Puerto Rico, Monaco. Oh no, wait. Suecia is Sweden. Suiza is Switzerland. Oh man, my Spanish is failing me once again. India. And then these are religious medallions. Military medals. Premios y colegios religiosos. And then, yeah, these are just from different countries. Medallions and prizes and things like that. Medals from different countries. Religious ones, military ones. It's very cool. I think that's basically it for the museum. But before we leave, you know, let's take a, let's take a walk around the, uh, around the grounds. We walked around the one side there where we saw the pond. We saw sort of the interior courtyard area. Oh, no, wait, you know what? We haven't gone to the church yet. All right, let's go back down. 
and we'll go over to the church, to the chapel. And that's how we'll end it. That's a fitting end, I think, for this trip. Let's go down to the chapel. And we'll take a look in there. And then I think that'll be it. You can see the dome in the back of the chapel right there, on top there. The chapel, of course, is the classic uh, style. If you look at it from the top, the floor plan looks like a cross with the dome right in the center of the cross. Hola. All right, let's take a look in. Oh, wow. This is pretty amazing. So there's the dome. So the nave, where we are up in the front, it's like the long part of the cross. And there's the dome. Wow. I mean, it's, you know, obviously it's nowhere as near as intricate as like the cathedral that we saw in the city of Cordoba, but I mean, it is pretty amazing. And of course, like I said, it took them hundreds of years to build this thing. Of course, they've added, you know, electricity, lights. But this would have all been, you know, lit with, uh, by candlelight. Candles, perhaps, maybe like oil lamps, too. Like that, there's one hanging back there. I don't even know if that's like a modern reproduction you see it there, or if that would be like, there would be hanging oil lamps like that. Not sure, not sure. Maybe someone in the comments knows. But man, look at this. If we turn back around and look back towards the door. Looks like there's a whole second, second floor up there where people would sing. Maybe that's like a choir loft. They'd stand up there and sing. It's really amazing. I know we said this was going to be the last place we go, but I noticed when I was coming in here around the side, there's a cemetery. I think maybe we'll go around there and just take a look and see, see what's in there. I mean, I, I know what's going to be in there. There's going to be, but you know, graves, but let's take a look. It'll be the, that'll be the last thing. Very, very small, just a very small little cemetery on the side here. I think maybe this, you know, some of this was preserved, like these very old, very old tombstones. And uh, this cross here is preserved too, I think. But I would imagine, well, I don't know. I mean, the, the, you know, this, this is a stone. I don't know if this was like they they paved it over with concrete maybe because like I said you know the the Jesuits were expelled in 1767 this property changed hands and it didn't become a national historical site until uh, 1941 so there's <laughs> there's a lot of years in there where stuff could have been changed destroyed paved over you know you never know That's it. Take a walk back out towards the front gate here. Then we can figure out how we're gonna get back down into the town where the bus station is. We took a taxi to get out here. Um, it's walking distance. You can walk it, but it's kind of a long walk, and it is it is real hot today. I don't know if I want to be walking out in the sun, but at the same time, I don't exactly <laughs> I don't exactly have a number for like a cab or anybody like that so we may end up just having a walk glad I wore my sunscreen today so anyway that was it 
Estancia de Jesús María. Museo Jesuitico Nacional. So if you're interested, got the hours right here. You are permitted to enter with mate and a uh, sun chair, but not with a pet. You are permitted to film, or at least I was, and it's closed on the, uh, looks like, uh, first day of May and, and January. And then there's a uh, contact info, Estancia de Jesus Maria, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. So, you can check it out. I mean, if this is, uh, if this is something you'd be interested in, if you're interested in history and religious artifacts and things like that. This is a really cool place to come. Just struck me while I was standing here, you know, outside the, uh, the Jesuit chapel over there and the Jesuit ranch next to this pond. It's a hot day, but there's a nice breeze over here. There's some waterfowl swimming over there in the pond. And I mean, look at this. Guys, <laughs> I probably don't say this enough in a lot of the videos because we're, you know, at museums and doing stuff like that, but man, Argentina is like, <laughs> it is such a beautiful country. It really is. You know, you, you lose track of it when you're in, you're in a city, you know, you're in, stuck down in like the soup day in Buenos Aires, or you're like, you know, sucking exhaust fumes on the bus in, in Cordoba. I mean, the cities are, are cool. I really like them, but man, you get out like even just a little ways outside the city. It's really beautiful. And of course, this isn't even nearly the most beautiful place in Argentina. There's amazing, you know, natural wonder all over Argentina. I mean, it's such a, such an amazing uh, and diverse country as far as like different climates and different, you know, biomes and different just nature, just beautiful nature, but I mean, I don't know, something standing right here in the shade, trying to cool off a little bit, figure out exactly how I'm gonna get back to the <laughs> to the town. I don't know, I just figured I, I should film this because it really is just so beautiful. Anyway, that's that. I don't even know if this is gonna end up in a video. This might be just for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we will see you in the next video.